closed captioning for Lift Up Jesus is paid for by our friends at Galpin Ford of Los Angeles. People across the country are writing to tell us how much they're enjoying Dudley Rutherford's latest book, Compelled, The Irresistible Call to Share Your Faith. Like reader Bobby, who wrote, this book is an asset in helping to help others find their way to salvation without sounding like a fanatic. And now it's your turn. If this book has made a difference for you, we'd love to know. So many people could be touched by your encouragement and recommendation. Call the number on the screen or visit our website right now and tell us how compelled the irresistible call to share your faith has been helpful. You can even go to Amazon and write a review of the book in your own words. The truth is, you could play an important part in helping others discover this great message from Pastor Dudley. When we have the boldness, motivation, and tools to share the gospel, Jesus Christ will be lifted up so that the whole world might believe. If you've yet to receive this book, now is the perfect time to call. It also makes a great gift for a friend, coworker, or family member. Compel the irresistible call to share your faith. Sharing Christ with the world is far easier than you think. Get your copy today. I don't care, whenever I'm at the beach and I see these waves and they just keep coming one after another, I always think, this always goes through my mind, these waves have been hitting this, these shores since the beginning of creation. Had I stood here 100 years ago, I would have been looking at these waves. And it causes me to think of the faithfulness of God that when I look at the consistency of the waves, I'm reminded of the consistency of the Lord God that we serve. How day after day, month after month, year after year, decade after decade, century after century, God is a faithful God. Hello again and welcome as we lift up Jesus with Pastor Dudley. I'm Michael North. You've picked the perfect day to be with us as we start a new sermon series that also happens to be our theme for the year, I Love LA. Over the next several weeks, we'll be looking at many things that make the city of Los Angeles unique. One of the ways God's majesty is demonstrated in creation is through our beaches, the breathtakingly vast oceans, the thundering waves, showing us both God's grace and force at the same time. Today, Pastor Dudley will show us our Creator God's creativity, faithfulness, and power. Let's join Dudley now as he takes us to the beach. I want you to take your Bibles and turn to this verse. You need to see this. You need to mark this. Jeremiah chapter 5. It's an Old Testament book. It's going to take you a minute maybe to find that. Jeremiah chapter 5. And also, if you'll look at the cover of your bulletin, and I know we kind of ran out of bulletins today, so I'm showing you mine. Uh, this first week, and if you look at your sermon notes, uh, we want to talk about the beaches of California. One, if not the biggest draws for the millions of people who move to California, and also the 50, approximately 50 million tourists that visit every year, they visit because of our weather and our beaches. Now, if you were born and raised here, you might take that for granted. But if you're like me and you grew up in another part of the country where it's cold and snowy, you never take it for granted. Amen? Amen. I remember the day like it was yesterday. It was 31 and a half years ago. The day that I moved from Des Moines, we called it Des Moines, Alaska. <laughs> if you asked me where I was from, I said, I, 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 I live in Des Moines, Alaska. It was so cold there. But I remember the day I moved from Des Moines, Iowa to come to Southern California to pass to this church like it was yesterday. I came on the 10 freeway. The 10 freeway, the interstate, is the fourth largest interstate in the United States of America. 
It is the southern route, the largest in the southern route, the 10 freeway, I don't know if you know this, it goes all the way from Florida to California. And I was on that freeway, I'd gone through New Mexico, I had gone through Arizona, I had entered the great state of California, and I was coming here to pastor the first day on the 10 freeway headed west, the map, we didn't have GPS back in those days, Some of you don't even know what a map is. <laughs> the map told me as I'm on the 10 that I have to go north on the 170, the 101, or the 405 to get up to Granada Hills. And on that day, I decided my first day, uh-uh. I'm taking the 10 freeway until I run into the Pacific Ocean, and you know where I ended up? I ended up in Santa Monica, California. And I parked my car and got out and went to the beach and I thanked the good Lord that he had taken me out of the cold winter climate <laughs> to the warm weather and the beaches of sunny, sunny California. And I have been thanking God ever since. Pastor Jeff will mention in your life group material this week that 95,000 miles of shoreline in the United States of America. And there's something about the waves that are calming, mesmerizing, soothing, majestic, beautiful, addictive-like. I never, ever, ever get tired of watching the waves crash or listening to that sound, amen? And just so you know, every time you're ever at the beach, I want you to know that it all comes from God. Amen. Jeremiah chapter 5, <laughs> verse 22, God said, should you not fear me, declares the Lord, should you not tremble in my presence, why? Because he said, I am the one that made the sand, a boundary for the sea, an everlasting barrier it cannot cross. I've been at the beach many times, and I've been there, and I've thought, well, how come the wave stopped here? Why didn't it stop up here? The Bible says, God said, I made the sand, a boundary for the sea, an everlasting barrier it cannot cross. The waves may roll but they cannot prevail. They may roar, but they cannot cross it. And something happens every time I'm at the beach. I can't explain it to you, but I can't help but think about God. I am drawn to God when I'm at the beach. I don't know how you can be an atheist and go to the beach <laughs> and leave an atheist. Psalm chapter 19 says that God reveals himself in creation. And there are three things that I want to teach you that I learned whenever I'm at the beach. The first one might be obvious if you're taking notes, and that is that we serve a God who is a creative God. He is creative. It's what He does. It's His nature. It's His character. If you ever read the Bible and you begin in the very first chapter, the very first page, the very first book, the book of Genesis, and you get to the very first verse, in fact, the first three chapters talk about creation, but the first verse in the Bible says, in the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. In just six days it's, it's explained that in the first two days of creation, God created the earth, He created the sky, and then He created the sea. The whole earth was covered by water. And then on the third day, God created the land. That was on the third day. The sea was on day two. The land and the beaches were on day three. The vegetation on day three. Day four, he creates the stars and the sun and the moon. Day five, he creates the sea creatures and the birds of the air. On day six, he creates all the animals. Now, we know he created dogs. We're not sure he created cats. We're not sure. The Bible doesn't say where cats came from, so we just don't know. <laughs> but on day six, he created all the animals and he created humans, both male and female. And on the seventh day, he rested. I want you to think about it, that everything on this earth that you have ever seen was created in six days. The oceans, the mountains, the stars of the galaxy, the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, Yosemite, the Niagara Falls, the hills here in Porter Ranch, 
the seven continents, North and South America, Europe, Africa, Asia, the Antarctica and Australia, the seven seas and the five oceans, the beaches, the sand, the waves, and all of humankind he created in just six days. Did you know that the earth is covered? 70% of the earth, surface of the earth are the oceans and less than 5% of the ocean has ever been explored. Did you know that nearly 94%, that's a high number, that nearly 94% of all life on earth exist in the oceans? Did you know that between 70 and 80% of the oxygen that we need to survive is produced by marine algae in the ocean? And right now, while you're sitting here, the earth is spinning on its axis at 1,000 miles an hour. And as we're spinning like this 1,000 miles an hour, the earth is also rotating around the sun, traveling through space, traveling at 67,000 miles per hour, almost 70,000 miles per hour we're traveling right now. And you're just sitting here. <laughs> Did you know that the tides are a battle between the gravitational pull of the earth against the gravitational pull of the moon and the earth always wins? That scientists still today do not and cannot fully explain gravity. They think they know, but they just don't know. Did you know that there are 400 billion stars in our one galaxy, but this is just one galaxy. We know that there are at least 200 billion other galaxies. We really don't know how many galaxies there are. Did you know that the sun is 93 million miles away? But the sun is so massive that 1.3 million Earths could be placed inside the sun. Did you know that if all of your DNA inside your body was taken out and stretched and put in strands, the DNA strands in your body, if they were laid end to end, it would go for 34 billion miles long? I'm telling you that God is a creative God. And I want you to write this down. It speaks to the fact that He, God, can do anything. I mean, when you study, everybody say the word study, not just look at, but if you study the universe and study creation, it is beyond human understanding. And you realize in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 12, that the Bible says that God holds the entire universe just in the palms of his hand. It speaks that he can do anything because he's creative, he is sovereign, he's all-knowing, he's detailed, he understands it means that your impossible situation is always possible with the Lord God by your side. It means that when you can't figure out anything in your life, that God has everything figured out. I just want you to know and understand that whatever situations you are facing today, that it does not surprise God. It doesn't baffle God. It, it, it does not stress God out. We serve a God who specializes in the impossible. All you have to do is ask Abraham and Sarah in Genesis chapter 17. Sarah was over 80 years of age when, she, when God blessed her with a son named Isaac. You ask her if God specializes in the impossible. Ask Balaam and Balaam in Numbers chapter 22 verse 28 when he looked for a over and he saw his donkey and his donkey started talking in the Hebrew language if God specializes in the impossible. Ask the Israelites in Exodus chapter 14 verse 22 when their backs were up against the Red Sea and Pharaoh and the entire Egyptian army was about to attack them and God just opened up the Red Sea and they escaped walking across a dry riverbed. Ask them if God specializes in the impossible. And ask the Virgin Mary in Luke chapter 1, verse 34, when she had never, ever been with a man, yet she gives birth to the baby Jesus. Ask her if God specializes in the impossible. And ask the lame man who was healed in John chapter 5, or the blind man in Luke chapter 18 who received his sight, if God specializes in the impossible. And while you're at it, you might as well turn right on over there to John chapter 11, there's a man named Lazarus who had been rotting in the grave for three days and Jesus raised him from the dead. Why don't you ask, oh, Lazarus, if God specializes in the impossible? Whatever problem you're worried about here today, God has a million different ways to solve that problem. 
Jesus said in Luke chapter 18, these words, verse 27, what is impossible with man is possible with God. We serve a God who specializes in the impossible. <laughs> the second thing I think of when I'm standing there on that shore is the faithfulness of God. I, I don't know what you think about when you go to the beach, but when I'm at the beach, one of the things that always comes into my mind, I don't, I, and I've been to beaches all over the world, I don't care, whenever I'm at the beach and I see these waves and they just keep coming one after another, I always think, this always goes through my mind, these waves have been hitting this, these shores since the beginning of creation. Had I stood here 100 years ago, I would have been looking at these waves. Uh, if I was here 500 years ago, I'd have been looking at these waves. If I'd been standing here 5,000 years ago, I'd still be looking at these waves. And it causes me to think of the faithfulness of God that when I look at the consistency of the waves, I'm reminded of the consistency of the Lord God that we serve. How day after day, month after month, year after year, decade after decade, century after century, God is a faithful God. The writer of Lamentations in chapter 3, verse 22 and 23, he says, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. He should turn us all into french fries. That's what we deserve. <laughs> but his compassions never fail. Verse 23 says they are, they are new, his compassions. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The writer of Exodus, Exodus 34, verse 6, the Lord is a compassionate and he's a gracious God. He is slow to anger. He's abounding in love and abounding in faithfulness. The psalmist writes in Psalm 90, verse 2, before the mountains were born, for you brought forth the earth and the world from everlasting to everlasting, you are God. The writer of Isaiah pens these words, in Isaiah 25, verse 1, O oh Lord, you are my God. I will exalt you and I will praise your name for in perfect faithfulness you have done marvelous deeds. Paul writes in 1 Corinthians 10, these three words, God is faithful. 1 Thessalonians 5, 24, the one who calls you is faithful. 2 Thessalonians 3, 3 reads, the Lord is faithful faithful we all know the words in hebrews 13 8 that says jesus christ is the same yesterday today and forever oh i've got good news that god does not change like shifting shadows and when you look at those waves coming one after another i want you to be reminded of the faithfulness of god and it speaks right this down to the truth that his love endures forever his mercy endures forever his goodness endures forever day after day moment after moment he's speaking this truth that he loves you that he cares for you that he's providing for you that he's gracious to you that he is good to you and whenever you see those waves and you listen to the calming consistency of those waves remember that all of creation was for you for your enjoyment for your good pleasure and god gave you eyeballs so that you could see those waves God was the one that put taste buds on your tongue just so that when you ate a strawberry, you could go, ooh, that's pretty good. And the next day, you could eat chocolate and say, that's pretty good. And the next day, you eat a taco. And from the next day, for the rest of your life, you eat tacos. All of this planet, according to the story of creation, was for you because he's a good, good father. And even today, he's still not finished creating this very moment. For the last 2,000 years, Jesus has been in heaven working on your eternal mansion, a place called heaven.
I want you to know, to remember, to thank, to acknowledge when you're standing at that beach and you're marveling at his beauty. I just want you to know that he loves you. He loves you yesterday. He loves you today. He's going to love you tomorrow. He loves you for all of eternity. And the most amazing, one of the most amazing verses in the Bible, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13, that says, even when we are faithless, he will remain faithful. Oh, that, that, that gave me goosebumps right there. Greater than the ocean, greater than the mountains, greater than all the flowers, greater than all the stars is the love of God. Why, there is nowhere you can run, there's nowhere you can hide that is beyond the love of God. His love, now we know this, a high definition, resolution picture of God's love is when we see His Son, Jesus Christ, dying on a cross with His blood shed for our sins. That's the greatest picture of love. And yes, that happened 2,000 years ago, and that, yes, that's a long time ago that He gave up His Son so that you might be redeemed, that you might be restored, that you might be saved, that you might be forgiven, that you might be cleansed. But I want you to know that the cross was not just a one-time thing. That every day, every day, like the waves that fall across the shores around the entire world, is the love and the provision and the grace of God that just washes over you. From now until the end of time, and there is no end of time. Number three, I think of the power of God. I think of the creativity of God. I think of the faithfulness of God. But I also think about the power of God. I want you to go back to the first time you ever saw the ocean. Do you remember the first day? Little tiny wave and you were scared out of your mind. Oh, what is this? Oh, it's a wave. You want to walk out? Yeah, walk out. Me? Walk out there? I don't know. I don't know. It's like it's a wave. It's like that high. <laughs> but even though the wave was that high, you could feel the energy in that wave. You, you could sense the power of God in a little tiny wave. And you go, oh, go on, go on. No, no, I'm scared. I'm scared. I'm scared. Put your foot in the sands moving. Oh, my. What am I? Doing? Come on, come on. Get in, get in, get in, get in. You remember that day? And then finally you got used to that little wave and all of a sudden you began to look at the vastness of that ocean and you started to think that the earth, that the earth is three-fourths of the surface of the earth is covered by this, this thing called an ocean. And all of a sudden you, saw, you started to begin to understand the size and the scope of an almighty God. I can't help but think about how powerful God is. Yes, he's creative when I look at that. Yes, he's faithful. But I stand in awe of God's power when I see those waves. And so on one hand, I have this respect. I can't help. I just have respect for God. I honor God. I revere God when I see the work of his hand. I'm reminded that this is his world and I'm just living in it. Be sure to join Pastor Dudley next week when he continues his message on beaches. What challenge are you facing today? The truth is, if we're honest, we all have an obstacle we need to overcome in our lives. Pastor Dudley has written a unique book about our biggest challenges called Walls Fall Down. Based on the classic biblical story of Jericho, this book highlights seven keys that Joshua and the Israelites followed that gave them victory over the impossible walls of that city. These seven spiritual principles can be applied to any challenge you face today. And for your financial gift of any size to this ministry, we'll rush your copy of Walls Fall Down to you right away. Now is the time to seize the victory in your life. And the foundation behind Joshua's victory is the key to overcoming your hurdles. When we choose to do things God's way, walls crumble and victory replaces defeat. Discover today how your personal Jericho is no match for the power of God. Walls fall down. Isn't it time for your breakthrough?
As you know, the name of our television broadcast and radio broadcast is to lift up Jesus. And our logo, many people don't realize this, but our logo is very intentional. You'll notice that there's an S which represents the Savior and it's a path because Jesus said that he's the only way. He's the way, the truth, and the life, and no one can come to the Father except through me. And so that S represents that Jesus is the only way to salvation. And then you notice the four colors, and we actually have this where you can download this if you go to our website, liftupjesus.com, and you'll notice, first of all, the red color, which the Bible says that we've all sinned and that the wages of sin is death, but the Bible also says that Jesus Christ died on that cross in our place. That red stands for the blood of Christ, that when he shed that blood, it was an atonement for our sins. The blue stands for your baptism. Now, some people don't understand this, but the Bible clearly teaches that every single believer in Jesus is supposed to be baptized. And we're to be baptized into his name, not the name of a church, not the name of, a, of an organization, but in the name of Jesus. And when you're baptized into his name, it's a commitment that you are serving him. You're going to you're, going, you're willing to die and to live for Him for the rest of your life. And the Bible says that if you have repented and if you have confessed Him as your Lord, that you are to be baptized into His name. And of course, the green stands for after you come up out of that water, after you become a Christian, that every believer is supposed to continue to grow and to mature and become more like Jesus each and every day. The Bible says that he who began a good work in you will carry it on to completion, Philippians 1.6. And of course, the yellow stands for heaven. And the Bible tells us that one day that every believer from every tribe and every tongue from every nation, that one day we will gather together around the throne of God and we will worship the Lamb of God. God bless you and thank you for listening to this. Share it with as many people as you possibly can. And remember, whatever you're doing and wherever you're going to always lift up Jesus. Hey, I wanna tell you something that you might not be aware of, but every single month, like clockwork, I send out a devotional via the internet to every listener, to everyone who signs up. It's free, there's no charge. All you have to do is to go to our website, liftupjesus.com, go up to the tab that says Know and Grow. Check on that tab and you'll find my blog. Log on to my blog and there's a place for you to sign up today. And from now until you cancel it every single month, you will hear from me in your mailbox, your Dropbox. We're gonna send you a personal devotional from Lift Up Jesus from my heart into your heart, into your home, and you'll start getting your devotionals this week. God bless you, and do this today.